The Bible has a lot to say about darkness, and the word darkness, from what I have seen, seems to always be used in a negative light and associated with something else negative in the Bible. So we are going to look at what the Bible says about darkness. The Bible says that God created it, but there isn't a record of when he created it. This is one of the reasons why I believe there is a gap in between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. I believe that in this gap you have the fall of Satan. I don't believe it was a gap of billions of years, and I don't believe God used evolution, and I don't believe there were humans before Adam. In this gap, you have Lucifer reigning with the sons of God, with him on the earth. Studying the word darkness, we can see that it is the opposite of God, and, would, and darkness wouldn't have been there if some type of catastrophe and sin hadn't taken place. Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. If you will look at Genesis 1-4, you will notice that God called the light good, but God didn't call the darkness good. In Genesis 1-3, we records the creation of light, but the creation of darkness isn't found there. Darkness is so much the opposite of God and against His nature that it couldn't have been there unless there had been some sort of destructive act, judgment, rebellion, sin, mourning, or death. So we are going to look through the scriptures and look at the word darkness and how it is associated with all of those things. It seems that the time that Satan fell was in between the first two verses of the Bible before Adam and Eve were ever created. He was reigning on earth until iniquity was found in him, and then when he lifted up himself and went against God, God then brought a flood to destroy the earth. It describes this in Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 4, which says, And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of their creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. People say this is referring to Noah's flood, but look at Second Peter 3, 4, it says, From the beginning of the creation. The beginning of creation was over a thousand years before Noah and his flood. Notice it says, the world that then was, is set in Second Peter 3, 6. This is referring to the original earth that perished by a flood. God recreated the earth and then created man. That is the earth we are on now. The world didn't perish in Noah's flood, but every living creature perished in Noah's flood. Then there is the new heaven and the new earth in the future, so you have three worlds. And in the original one, you have Satan reigning as Lucifer, and we are going to prove this by looking at this word, darkness. Reading the Bible, you will see that the word darkness is associated with rebellion. And no doubt Satan re rebelled when he was reigning on the original earth. So this is one of the reasons darkness was upon the face of the deep in Genesis. But Psalms 107.10 says, Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God, and contemned the counsel of the Most High. And the first one to rebel was Satan himself. Isaiah fourteen twelve says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will send into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Or, back before God created Adam and Eve, Satan was reigning on the original earth before iniquity was found in him. He wanted to be like God and rebelled against him. Darkness is associated with rebellion, and many of the angels rebelled with Lucifer, and this is what turned into the rulers of darkness of this world, the ones who put rebellion in the hearts of you. 
Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. When Satan rebelled, God destroyed the earth with water. And this is why Genesis 1, 2 says, The earth was without form and void. And God doesn't create things without form and void. Isaiah 45, 18 says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Notice it says, He created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. That doesn't sound like without form and void. The without form and void is after the first flood happened. So before Adam, God let Satan reign on the original earth until he destroyed it with water because of Satan's rebellion. Another thing darkness is associated with is God's wrath. And not just God's wrath, but as God's wrath as a covering water. Look at Psalms 88, 14. It says, Lord, why castest thou off thy, my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They come passing me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and mine acquaintance into darkness. Being submerged in water is a sign of God's judgment in the Bible. He destroyed the first world by water, as it says in Second Peter chapter 3, 5 through 7. And when Jonah ran from God, he was ate by a well, and, it, and he says, The floods come past me about. So darkness is associated with rebellion, God's wrath, and God's wrath as covering waters. The Bible has Pharaoh as a type of the devil. Look at Ezekiel chapter 29 and verse 3. It says, Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh king of Egypt, the great dragon that liest in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. When the Egyptians continued to rebel against God and pursued the children of Israel, they got drowned out by water. With Pharaoh being a type of the devil, his army would be a type of the angels that sinned, and them drowning in the Red Sea would have you to remember the first flood that destroyed the original earth. Exodus 15 verse 4 says, Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea, his chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. Have you ever thought about what the children of Israel Going through the Red Sea was a picture of. It reminds me of the rapture of the church. When Jesus comes back for us, we will go straight up at the speed of light through a sea of glass above outer space. And that's what Psalms is talking about in Psalms 148 verse 4. It says, Praise him, ye heaven of heavens, ye waters that be above the heavens. It's talking about that sea of glass up above space. So light years above your head is a sea of glass that is talked about in the scriptures in Revelation 4 and verse 6 and 15 and verse 2. Job 41 says, Leviathan moves through this water. And Leviathan is the devil. So when Jesus Christ leads us out of the world, we go up through this crimson red sea above the heavens. We might have Satan, who is pictured by Pharaoh, right behind us as we go, but he can't touch us. Way back on the second day of creation, God divides the waters to make the second heaven, which is outer space. And you can see this in Genesis 1, 6. It says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. There were already waters mentioned in Genesis 1-2. So where did the waters come from if there wasn't a flood? There was a flood and that is the one in 2 Peter 3, 5-6 through where the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. So God divided the waters in the universe and made the second heaven. 
when God makes the new heaven and the new earth, this sea won't be there anymore. Revelation 21.1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first, first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Nothing will be separating us from seeing God in all His glory. Also think about it. Genesis 1-2 says, Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. If the earth was covered with water, it wasn't able to be inhabited. So this can't be referring to the original earth, but a destroyed earth without form and void. Remember, Isaiah 45, 18, which says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. But back on darkness being associated with the wrath of God, when the Lord Jesus Christ took the cup of God's wrath, there was darkness over all the land, once again showing darkness, is associated with God's wrath being poured out on sin. Matthew twenty-seven forty-five says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. There are things working in the darkness that we can't see. Since we can't see what is working in the darkness, people can be blinded by these principalities and powers that Ephesians 6 was referring to. When we are saved, God delivers us from this power of darkness. It says in Colossians 1.13, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. But darkness isn't just associated with his wrath, but it's associated with betrayal. Satan, who used to be called Lucifer, the anointed cherub, had responsibility of bringing glory to God, and was probably the song leader in heaven because he was made with instruments in his very being. When he sinned, he betrayed God. Before iniquity was found in him, God gave him power to reign over the earth, and he wanted God's place. This was an act of betrayal, so betrayal is associated with darkness. Luke twenty-two fifty-two says, Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple, and the elders which were come to him, Be ye come out as a, against a thief? With swords, when I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. God can see what is in the darkness and reveals to the Bible reader what is wicked. Daniel 2.22 says, He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and light dwelleth with him. The unsaved man can't understand the Bible and the way Bible believers think. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So darkness is a sign of deception and blindness. If the devil got so many of the angels to sin, they were deceived and blinded by him on the original earth, in between the first two verses of the Bible. Just like he deceives them, he deceives and blinds many people. 1 John 2.11 says, But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. John 12.35 says, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Ecclesiastes 2.14 says, The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness, and I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. Isaiah 42.7 says, To open their blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Second Corinthians 4.4 4 says, And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Unsaved people are blinded by the rulers of the darkness of this world, and it is up to Christians to let the Holy Spirit use them to lead these people to the light. Luke one seventy nine says, 
or chapter 1 verse 79 says to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Romans 2.19 says, And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. They can only get light through Jesus Christ, but until they do this, they are children of darkness, and their father is the devil. As John 8.44 says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Psalm 58.3 says, The wicked are estranged from their womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. You are born with the sin nature. You are a sinner and have always been one. And the moment you reach the age of accountability, when you realize you are a sinner, you are in danger of hell. The devil is the father of all lost people. So the saying, he's going to the dark side, doesn't mean much since you are automatically born on the dark side. Also notice it says Satan was a murderer from the beginning and not before or later. So if Satan didn't fall in the Genesis gap, where did he fall? Was he walking sinless in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve? I think that he fell in between those first two verses before Adam and Eve were ever even created. Notice how the power of Satan is associated with darkness, and we are trying to lead people away from that darkness. Acts 26, 18 says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. But those in darkness can't understand those in the light. John 1, 5 says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And other than trying to lead the unsaved out of darkness, the child of God should be separate from them. 2 Corinthians six fourteen says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? We should be separate from this dark world. Darkness and light do not go together. This is why God separated it back at the beginning of Genesis. Look back at Genesis 1-4 which says, And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Darkness is associated with being blind and deceived by Satan. Everyone who chooses the devil's side and says, I will do what I want to do or do what thou wilt will eventually stumble. The devil even falls five times and will be cast into the lake of fire. Proverbs 4.19 says, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Romans 13.12 says, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. John 12.46 says, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. John 8.12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Ephesians 5.11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So as you can see, darkness is so far from God that people who are in darkness aren't even in fellowship with God. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. So God even divided the light from the darkness back in Genesis. Genesis 1, 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. At this time, there was no need of the sun. There wasn't any darkness separating the earth from God in all his glory. God was the light thereof, just like it will be in the future. Revelation twenty one twenty three says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. There won't be any need for the sun, because the Lord will be the light. Just like I said previously, there won't be any more sea. 
Revelation 21, 1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. But Satan rebelled, and God had to cre create darkness, and this darkness is what he used to separate himself from the world. God is not the father of darkness, he is the father of light. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. 1 John 1.5 says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 2 Peter 1.19 says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. John 8.12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Revelation 21.23 says, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of the of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. People hate God in the Bible because it brings out the light on their sin. They reject Christ and stay a child of the devil, like it caused them in John 8, 44. They are in love with this present evil world, and more times than not they will pick darkness over the light, and that is because men love darkness. John 3.19 says, And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. The second time God brought a flood, Noah's flood, the Bible says the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6.5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Even more so in the time we are living in, people are unashamed of their sin, and spit in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for the same sins they enjoy. They are so much in darkness and blinded by Satan, that they will call their evil good, and call good evil. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Darkness is associated with evil. People will leave the way of righteousness and go straight for the way of darkness. They will sell out for fame, fortune, and pleasure. Proverbs 2.13 says, Who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. They want to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. 2 Timothy 3, verse 4, is describing some sins in the last days. And it says, people will be traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. These same people are said to have pleasure watching other people sin. In Romans 1, 32, they love to watch others sin, and they pay money to watch them do it on big screens in dark rooms. The book of Ezekiel gives a great example of men thinking what they are doing in the darkness is hidden. Men feel comfortable sinning in dark places. Look at Ezekiel 8 and verse 7. It says, And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of wicked things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jezaniah the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, Hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. People don't realize God sees everything. He sees what you're doing, 
who you're cheating or lying to, what you're watching on TV. He sees the abortions, the hands that shed innocent blood, and every wicked thing man is doing on the face of the earth. 1 Corinthians 4 5 says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Job 34 22 says, There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. Luke 12 3 says, Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Darkness is also associated with hell. The angels that fell and took wives in Genesis 6 are said to be in torment and everlasting chains under darkness. Jude 1 6 says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. 2 Peter 2 4 says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. The darkness of hell lasts forever. Jude 1 13 says, Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Matthew 25 talks about an unprofitable servant who was cast into outer darkness. This also reminds us of what happened to Satan when he rebelled. He was a servant of God at one point, the anointed cherub that covereth, but he was lifted up in pride and wanted to be like God. God destroyed the original earth with the first flood, and Satan was put into darkness. Now in his natural state he is Leviathan that lives in the deeps, but transforms himself into an angel of light. Matthew 25.30 says, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 22.13 says, Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand, hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 8.12 says, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Also remember God made hell for the devil and his angels. Darkness is always connected to judgment. When Satan rebelled against God, he brought the first flood on the original earth as a judgment. So all throughout the Bible, darkness is also connected with a judgment. Just like what God did to Pharaoh when he told Moses to stretch out his hand and darkness covered the land of Egypt. Exodus 10.21 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness on all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither arose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. The second coming of Jesus Christ is described as a day of darkness. He comes back to kill all the God-haters with a sharp two-edged sword. In Amos 5, it describes this day of darkness and even says his judgment runs down as waters and his righteousness is a mighty stream. So once, you, once again, you have darkness in connection with water. Amos 5.18 says, Woe unto you that des desire the day of the Lord. To want what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is as darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house, and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark? and no brightness in it. I hate and I despise your feast days, and I will not smell your solemn assemblies, though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings. I will not accept them, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials, but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Nahum 1.8 says, But with an overrunning flood will he make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. Zephaniah 1.15 says, That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. In Genesis 1.2, When the heavens are covered with blackness, 
it is like being covered with sackcloth. Isaiah 50 and verse 3 says, I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. This shows something horrible had happened. Do a word search on the word sackcloth in your Bible, and you will notice it is associated with things negative all the way through the Bible and associated with mourning over something. Revelation 6.12 says, And I beheld when I had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Genesis 37.34 says, And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. Even the two witnesses who caused so much trouble for the haters of God in the time of Jacob's trouble are clothed in sackcloth. Revelation 11.3 says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. So you can see how all through the Bible, darkness is associated with something negative. In Genesis 1-2, darkness was upon the face of the deep. It was there because Satan rebelled. God in his wrath brought a flood to destroy this original earth, just like the sons of God shouted for joy over the creation, they mourned over the destruction of the world. In Job 38, it refers back to the original earth. These are the verses that let us know the sons of God in the Old Testament refers to angels. And sons of God are anything that is a direct creation by God. Job 38, 5 says, Who laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. It said who laid the measures thereof. And this doesn't sound like Genesis 1-2. It sounds like Genesis 1-1. Genesis 1-2 says without form and void. If God creates things without form and void. Why does it say who laid the measures thereof. And why does it say in Isaiah, he formed it to be inhabited, he, he created it not in vain. Now look at Job 38, 8 through 11. Right after the verses I just showed you about the sons of God shouting over the original creation, it says in verse 8, Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, as if it had been issued out of the womb? Or who... Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and a thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Notice it says, Shut up the sea, referring to God using a flood. Notice verse 9 set refers to a thick darkness, which would be the darkness of Genesis 1-2. And verse 10, he sets up bars and doors to keep someone out. Then verse 11 tells us the person he is keeping out is proud. And it says Leviathan has this characteristic in Job 41-34. It says, He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. And if you have any doubt who Leviathan is, check out Isaiah 27, 1. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. We know Job 38, 11 was talking about Satan because he was full of pride. Ezekiel 28.17 says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Also, if you search without form and void, you will come to Jeremiah 4.23, which isn't referring to Genesis 1-2, but it shows the phrase without form and void came from a result of God's judgment. Jeremiah 4.23 says, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. And I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, 
and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was a, no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. A lot of the angels were deceived and blinded by Satan, and this is why they rebelled. And all three of those things, deception, blindness, and rebellion, are associated with the power of dark. So you can see just by studying the word darkness that there was a catastrophe be between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2, and that's why darkness covered the face of the deep. But you can be called out of darkness. Before you are saved, you are the enemy of God. If you aren't saved, you are God's enemy and have yet to be reconciled to him by the blood of Jesus Christ. Colossians talks about having made peace through the blood of his cross. The only way to be reconciled to God and have your sins washed away and called out of darkness is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2, 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a pe peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 says, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Colossians 1, 13 says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, if you have trusted on the Lord Jesus Christ and His blood for salvation, then you should walk as children of light. Don't go along with the darkness of this world. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Ephesians 5, 8 says, But ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We can't be saved by doing good things or by not doing certain things. Our righteousness is filthy rags. We can't establish our own righteousness and expect to go to heaven. We have to get imputed righteousness from Jesus Christ. Romans 3.22 says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all sinners who deserve eternal punishment. Galatians 3.22 says, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. 1 Corinthians 15.3-4 says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. God in the flesh. He died on the cross to pay your sin debt. He was buried and rose from the dead three days later. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Acts sixteen thirty one says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. If you come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner you are, and put your trust in Him and His precious blood to save you, then you can be saved and have eternal life. If you don't, then you are in danger of hell. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Everyone is going to die, and if you die right now without Jesus Christ, then you will wake up in hell, just like the rich man in Luke 16. You will stay in hell until you go up to the great white throne judgment and then be tossed into the lake of fire. Don't put off getting saved another second. The Lord Jesus Christ can save anyone who comes to him. It is whosoever. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins.